making this video because I've been really, really fucking pissed off about the shit that I saw um, regarding this Range Rover being chased. You know, I, I think about what I would have done if I was this guy and I had my wife and my five-month-old child or any year-old child in a car and something like this happened. Because I've, I've been in situations where there have been bikers and shit around me. And, um, you know, the thing about it is, for the most part, I just let them go by because I know a bicycle is going to be faster than my car anyway. But I also hate the fact that you're dealing with a situation where you have a vehicle that's much smaller than your car. Because you got to understand, I drive around in very big, big cars. I mean, any vehicle I'm in usually weighs more than 4,500 pounds. So, first of all, b before I want to dispel, first of all, I got a problem with there's already assholes all over Facebook. Uh, trying to play the race card because like there I, I heard people trying to say oh yeah um like you got some minorities or some shit on a bike and, and automatically they're a gang no these motherfuckers are a fucking motorcycle gang the second they turn into a pack and they use pack mentality to bully a driver on the road who's in an suv now you know the fucked up thing is the guy who had the GoPro or whatever kind of camera he was using, this guy is perfect because of the fact that he put this video online and he thought, you know, he was just going to make a lot of money off of it. Either that or, because, you know, you don't put a video like that on fucking YouTube unless you, you're trying to make money off of it. So this guy got like basically 3 million views in just a couple of hours. So in any event, this guy, if I hope what he didn't think was that this video was going to vindicate his motorcycle gang, because basically it does the exact opposite. This video vindicates the driver, because here you've got a situation where you got a, a wife in the car and you've got a five-month-old in the car. There's no fucking way that this guy was driving recklessly when he's got his wife in the car and his child in the car. However, these motorcyclists, as you can see, and now let's go, let's go into the tape. Let's look at the 20, uh, I think it's the 25 second mark. Right now, they're just going around him. All these fucking assholes had to do was just go around him. He's in the middle lane. All they had to do was just either go around on the left side or go around on the right side. That's all they had to fucking do. So what do they do instead? Look at this jerk off cocksucker right here. Watch this. This motherfucker break checks... The SUV. Now you see it right there. He fucking brake checks the SUV. He gets in front of the SUV and he purposefully slows down in front of the SUV to get the guy to stop. But what you don't seem to understand, idiot, is that SUVs don't stop on a fucking dime. So I don't honestly think that this guy hit this guy on purpose. And the reason why is because if I had a fucking $80,000 Range Rover truck, let's say it was my 70,000 Jeep SRT8. If I or or let's say it was my Chrysler fucking three hundred that's only sixty thousand dollars. If I have a fucking seventy thousand or eighty thousand dollar truck, do you think I'm gonna hit somebody and let them scratch up the front of my bumper? I don't even want to be bothered with a fucking car accident. I don't want to be bothered with it. That's why I usually let people just go. I just fucking let them go. I don't I don't get in a situation where I know there could be a situation where I could get a scratch or some shit like that. I don't even like parking around other people. So I sure as fuck am not going to bully somebody on a fucking road when there's a chance that they could put a dent or a scratch in my car. And furthermore, if you're on a motorcycle and somebody's uh, behind you with a fucking car, if they hit you and you're on the motorcycle, they are automatically assumed to be in the wrong simply because they were in the back of the fucking accident. So watch this. This cocksucker fucking body checks or, or brake checks the guy in the SUV. So watch this. Guy gets hit. Unfortunately... The cameraman didn't turn around fast enough. But anyway, the guy gets hit. So the guy gets hit after he fucking purposefully brake checks the SUV. You never get in the front of a car and fucking brake check a fucking car. Cops have been caught on camera doing that shit. And even the cops get fucking in trouble for doing shit like that. So now all the bikers are watching this guy. So here's the thing. They swarm this guy. Like, you see this? Now, you're you're in a fucking car, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of fucking angry guys around you, and you got one guy probably shouting at you, uh, oh, why'd you hit me, motherfucking, this, that, and other. But uh, that's conjecture, because I don't know what they said at this point. So anyway, this fucking guy does the thing that he feels that makes most sense, to get his children or his wife and his son out of danger, or his kid, his 
five month old. He fucking runs these assholes down. Now, apparently, he attempted to dial 911. Now, I don't know at what point he dialed 911. I don't know if it was when he was running these motherfuckers over with the Rage Rover or if it was before that. But as far as I'm concerned, let, let me tell you something. And this is a true story. I There's always a possibility you can be carjacked. There's always a possibility somebody can try to get out in front of you with a gun and, and get out. Like, for instance, I've seen situations, especially on, uh, on the news, where people have blown their horn at other people. And people have jumped out of their cars with fucking pistols and shot people to death over just blowing their horn at somebody who was doing something in front of them, maybe hogging up the middle of the street and felt that, yeah, I'm big and bad, nobody can do nothing to me. Let me tell you something. I myself have considered the, the very possibility that I might have to use my car as a weapon. And any time I've been in a situation, and it's very infrequent, because I usually try to avoid all types of situations like that, I've always assumed that there may be a time when I have to use either a car or a Jeep as a fucking weapon. So I'm like, you know what? All you, all you got to do is fucking squash on that pedal, duck down, and plow through whoever's fucking trying to shoot at you. Because you never know. It, whether And you're in a city, you never know. Somebody might try to fucking uh, carjack you. You never know. You really never know. So this guy, fearing for his child and his wife, plows through these motherfuckers. And as he's driving off... Now, here's the thing. Now, every these idiots who are trying to say that they chased him in fucking self-defense. You don't chase somebody in fucking self-defense. And that's the thing that I've tried to tell people about Trayvon Martin. When you chase somebody, especially in a situation like this, you become an aggressor. That's what the court calls an aggressor. You're an aggressor right now. Rather, now if they really got run down by this motherfucker, why don't they just take his fucking license and give it to the cops? Right? No. What they did instead was they chose to follow this guy pursue this guy and they became aggressors and when they caught up with him they planned to assault this guy so what do they do these motherfuckers chase after this guy now this guy's driving he's driving so fast i didn't even know range rovers could drive that fast like if i'd known that i might have gotten a range rover instead of a jeep srt but in any event that fucking range rover's got some serious torque so anyway, what do they do? They're going at least 80 miles an hour chasing this guy. Now, this guy's got his wife and his child in the car. And they're chasing this fucking guy. Chasing him. Now, if you were that guy, what would you do? You know, the only thing that bothers me is that this poor asshole... The thing that bothers me is that this guy in this car did not have a fucking gun. Because if it was me, I would have gone George Zimmerman on these motherfuckers for chasing me like that. And I got my fucking family in the car, I would have gone George fucking Zimmerman on you. You would have been, they would have been cleaning up fucking bodies for weeks for fucking threatening my family. But fortunately, that's not me and that wasn't a situation I had to deal with. So what do they do when they finally catch up to them since they're defending themselves as some of these assholes say? What do they fucking do? What do they do? Once they are able to slow this guy down because he, he stopped in traffic, anybody who plays Grand Theft Auto should know. You stay on, when the cops are chasing you, or you're getting chased by some gang or some shit in Grand Theft Auto, you stay on the highway because you have a better chance of losing them than you do running through traffic. And this is Manhattan. I mean, if you're in Manhattan, you are not getting through traffic. You're just not. So in any event, what do they do? Fucking go up to his car and bash his window in with a helmet. So not only did they chase this guy after brake checking this guy and causing themselves to get hit, they chased the guy down and bash his fucking helmet open. They use they bash his window open with a fucking helmet. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm so fucking angry about seeing that. I wish I wish to God this guy was packing a fucking 50 caliber or fuck. I wish this guy had better protection. I wish this guy had better protection. I wish this guy had better protection. I wish, but he doesn't. And what ended up happening to him? Well, in the follow-up picture, this guy got beat down. And I don't know how many of them he injured, but I, I swear to God it wasn't enough. And that, that's my take on this shit. This man was bullied and assaulted, and I hope the judge throws every last one of those fuckers in jail.